inability to rely on the love that is our very essence shows up in many forms. Your ego wants you to believe that you are unacceptable and will gleefully assist you in creating an image to prove that it is so. Manifestations like obesity and personal slovenliness and eating disorders often are the fear-based projection of yourself. Ego can influence you to shun all efforts to be loved by others by refusing to allow the risk of an intimate encounter or the development of an intimate relationship. Ego often makes you selfishly pursue your own goals at others' expenses. You engage in perpetual conversation about yourself. We often use economic, social, and other types of excuses to defend behavior that does not extend love. For instance, you might excuse unloving or inconsiderate behavior because it's only my job or because everyone else does it. Expressions of disgust or rudeness towards others are based on ego. They are heard in stores, on freeways, in offices, at airports, in restaurants, any place you are in your daily life. These are some of the common expressions of a fear-based ego struggling to keep you away from the experience of love that is your true essence. Before you begin to change these behaviors and thought patterns, you need to examine the payoffs. What is some part of your receiving as a payoff for listening intently to ego? Your ego works for its living. Its payoff is not money, but just in keeping alive. Your ego is not open to making contact with God because it would be immediately put out of business. Your ego is in direct conflict with your true purpose for being there. You are here to give and receive love. Your ego protects you from that vision by keeping you in a belief system that declares you are separate and special. By hanging on to the fears of your insufficiency, you can avoid taking any risks. As long as you have self-doubt and all of its attendant fears, you are guaranteed to stay in servitude to your false self. Your ego thrives on guilt. Your higher self knows that you should forgive yourself, learn from mistakes, and release feelings of fear and anxiety. But ego hands you guilt so that it will thrive. Guilt is the inner fear that you should pay a price for any and all mistakes you have committed in your life. Thus the ego convinces you that you must feel guilty and it keeps you removed from your true spirit. Your ego doesn't reject love. The polite background ego voice whispers that love is a high ideal, but one that is loaded with danger. It warns you to not give too much love because you may be taken advantage of. Because you are so special, it tells you others want to take advantage of you. Ego promotes inauthentic love. In your relationships with others, your ego convinces you that your partner is just what you need to fill the emptiness within you. This is a great ruse that will forever keep you from knowing love and peace. Make a copy of this passage from Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. Tape it to your mirror and read it every morning. It will help stimulate the inner opening to the love you seek and dissolve fears if you are willing to do what the poet suggests. He says, I exist as I am, that is enough. If no other in the world be aware, I sit content. And if each and all be aware, I sit content. One world is aware, and by far the largest to me, and that is myself. And whether I come to my own today or in 10,000 or 10 million years, I can cheerfully take it now or with equal cheerfulness, I can wait. Remind yourself that God created you in perfect love that is changeless and eternal. As you recognize and affirm this aloud each day, you will lose your fear of inadequacy and incompleteness. Constantly recalling the affirmation of being a creation of God beyond the world of the manifest will chase the fears away. Forgive yourself and welcome love back into your life. When you can do this, a kind of balancing occurs. Rather than atoning for sins with guilt, you are more committed to promoting joy and service. You will begin to do what you originally came here to do. Notice the acts of kindness other people do rather than their wrongdoings. We are all good, decent, loving souls who occasionally get lost. When you can focus on the good in another and hold that in your mind, you are acting from your higher self. This can help dissipate fear and anger. Remind yourself how much you have to give away and of how precious and valuable your giving is. You have the same force running through you that allows the planets to move, the earth to orbit, the seeds to sprout, and the flowers to open. There is not a separate God for each person. There is one universal intelligence flowing through all of us. This is the force of love. Remind yourself of that every time you doubt your own divinity. Affirm to yourself that you are divine and that you love and are loved and will not be pressured by your false thinking ego to not know this. Remind yourself that the same force flows through you that flowed through Jesus Christ and Buddha. 
this should help whenever you feel your ego sneaking in, attempting to put fears of inadequacy and doubt into your mind. Accept that you are enough. I am enough affirms that you choose love and chase away doubts and fears. With the higher self as your new guide, you have permission to arrive and relax. You no longer have to prove yourself, but can begin in joyful earnestness to travel the path of love. Take the risk of intimacy whenever possible. Snuggle up and, and risk saying how much you love and appreciate someone. Tell that person that you're willing to be vulnerable in order to know him or her better. These open-hearted ways of expressing yourself can defeat fear of intimacy. Use any excuse you can to express your love and try to ignore the vehicle of expression. It is the substance of what you are and feel that counts, not the vehicle that you use. If those fears ever start to return, stop and ask yourself, so what's not to like? You cannot have a better past, so abandon the idea right now. You did what you knew how to do, given the circumstances of your life. Those mistakes of the past were driven by your ego, which wanted to keep you in its grasp. You listened to your false self and recoiled in fear over the idea of anyone knowing your true self. You moved away from love, but now you are back and making the choice for love. You know deep within you that at your primal level, you have been designed for love and happiness. You can choose to return to the brilliant light of love that is always with you. Go there often and all of your fears will be replaced by love. Let your thoughts remain on love. This is the realization of your higher self. It is the realization of your sacred quest. You can make the decision to be free from fear and doubt. There is no greater freedom. It can be difficult to finally just lighten up and understand that life is what happens while you're making other plans. This is it. Each and every instant of your life takes place in the present moment. Using your present moments to chase after future moments is an ego-based activity. When you are finally able to say that you have arrived, you will know what it feels like to be free. Your higher self does not want you to be lazy or without purpose, but to realize the power in knowing that you have arrived. When you know that this moment is your entire life, you are not focused on past or future moments, and you release the stress and tension that accompany the striving lifestyle. With that release, you become more productive and peaceful than you were when you looked behind or ahead of yourself and did not allow your mind to rest in the still center of the present moment. Being fully in the now means that you will experience heaven on earth because you are completely absorbed in the soul of the holy instant. To experience the bliss of knowing that you are here now in this moment, and that is all there needs to be, all there ever was, and all you will ever know, you must learn to trust your higher self and let go of those ingrained teachings from all the egos that have influenced your life up until now. You will begin to realize that you are not on trial in the now here. You will soon realize that your mission is to serve and extend the love that is your basic essence, period. You don't have to do more, even though you may choose to do a great deal. Your overriding objective is to stay focused on sending and receiving agape, the love of God. If you incorporate the following ideas into the practice of your daily mission, you will succeed in your objective. Nothingness. Nothingness has a very positive value in your life. It is out of nothing that all is created. Space is considered to be nothing, no particles, no form, so we describe it as nothing. To fear this empty space or to deny its value as a part of us means doubting our own existence. We came from nothingness, the nowhere I've described throughout this tape, to this world of form, the now here. Surrender. To understand the concept of surrendering, you will not be able to rely on your ego. Ego never wants you to even consider surrendering. It would much rather you hang on to the belief that you must strive and cling to the familiar way. The notion of being attached to what happened to you in the past can be very deeply ingrained in you by your false self. You must learn to recognize ego's attachment to the past when it uses this to keep you stuck in striving. Surrender the belief that your past is what is driving your present. Surrendering also means learning to recognize the signals from your higher self that something within you needs to be witnessed. This means surrendering to whatever is in the present moments of your life. For many people, it can be confusing to discern whether it is ego or spirit that is at the helm. I find that using the image of a boat moving along the surface of a lake is helpful in making the distinction between ego and higher self. I visualize the wake of the boat as a symbol of the past. The wake is not driving the boat. It is merely the trail that is being left behind by the present moment movements of my boat image. What drives the boat is the energy generated in the now. 
I do not credit or blame the past for the boat's present state of arriving in this spot on the lake. That past cannot drive you in this now, and that past needn't be held responsible for the boat's problems. Practice surrendering by creating a new agreement with now. Agree to know that your past is a trail of present moments that are all left behind, and at the same time, know that if you are having difficulty in this present moment, you will surrender to that reality. Surrendering invites your loving presence to be available in every now moment. What a pleasure each moment can then be, even the last moment. Acceptance Once when I was asked to define enlightenment, the best I could come up with was the quiet acceptance of what is. I believe that truly enlightened beings are those who refuse to allow themselves to be distressed over things that simply are the way they are. To arrive rather than to strive means applying the wisdom of Reinhold Niebuhr's so-called serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Knowing the difference can be the most difficult part. There is an ancient Zen teaching that says if you understand, things are just as they are. If you do not understand, things are just as they are. This is the essence of acceptance and the way of arriving rather than striving. Bewilderment Your physical being is an enormous miracle. Its thousands of working parts function with a divine organizing intelligence. Consider your blood circulation, air inhalation, and oxygenation, your eyes, muscles, and bones, all responding to a brain and nervous system that is beyond comprehension. There are miles of arteries and veins, intestines with infinitely tiny microbes, all working in unison with that divine intelligence that creates the body you occupy. To be in a state of bewilderment, stop and behold the wonder of you. Allow yourself to enjoy the bewilderment and awe of who and what you are. There is the miraculous machine that houses you, and there is the incomprehensible mystery of the ghost in the machine that is your mind and soul observing all. Patience. Our loving presence offers us the infinite patience that originates with God. It has taken me over 50 years to know many of the concepts I have talked about on this tape. God has been patient. I have done things in my life that today make me shudder in contempt, yet God somehow stuck it out with me, patiently seeing the potential for something grander. I have stolen and shoplifted in my earlier days, lied all too frequently, been promiscuous and unfaithful, used substances, and through all this and much, much more, God showed me her infinite patience. The stories of the lives of St. Paul and St. Francis of Assisi describe the same kind of patience. This infinite patience is available to you at all moments. Regardless of where you have been, how you have lived, or how much you have relied upon your false self, God's infinite patience is ever-present. One of the great teachers in my life was Paramansa Yogananda, a man who came out of India to teach the ways of the higher self to the people of the West. I've read many of his speeches and have found great comfort in his writings as well as reading about his life. I offer you one of my favorite sayings to ponder as you move toward an awareness of arriving rather than striving. Seek spiritual riches within, he reminds us. What you are is much greater than anyone or anything else you have ever yearned for. That is the voice of your higher self reminding you to quietly accept yourself and turn off the yearning. You are never going to get it all. You are it all already.